Hope everybody's staying warm. Such a delightful day to be outside. Not. Um, it's good to be inside. Uh, just a couple things to highlight. Uh, youth group is having a bake sale next Sunday uh, after church. If you'd like to help donate any baked goods for that sale, you can contact uh, Michelle or Gina, the youth group leaders. Otherwise, there'll be wonderful things to uh, purchase after church. Uh, and then a week from this Wednesday, the 17th, I believe it is, is Ash Wednesday. We will be having Wednesday services once again, 4 o'clock and 6.30. There will just be no meals this year because of all the COVID policies, but we will still have church at 4 and 6.30 uh, starting on Ash Wednesday. I think that's all I have. Uh, voters meetings in three weeks. Just keep that on your schedule the last Sunday of this month. Um, otherwise, a delight to be with you. Uh, blessings as we worship together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and have not kept your Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
continue as we sing the intro. I will sing to the Lord. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. sing to the Lord. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The Old Testament reading, the fifth Sunday after Epiphany, is from Isaiah chapter 40. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely stoned, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is stronger in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If I preach the gospel, then that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together for the Alleluia verse in the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed.
be seated for our next hymn, 398. Hail to the Lord's anointed, 398. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters of Christ, we heard in the gospel reading that Jesus wants to preach. He wants to preach, not just with his words, but, but also with his, with his deeds, with what he does. Well, God preached, right? In the beginning, when he spoke, I, and out of nothing, all things came into being. In, in the time of the Old Testament, God preached right through the patriarchs and the prophets. He created a people, a, a nation, and, and gave them a kingdom. Then we heard in Isaiah, he asked, do you not know? Do you not hear? He's saying, stop, look, listen to what God's saying, what the preaching and what he's done for you. Or are you too busy? Are, are your eyes too filled with the, the glitter of this world to see and your, your ears with the words of men to hear? The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. That, Mark tells us, is what John the Baptist preached. And it's also what Jesus preached. For the truth is the same no matter who preaches it. It's kind of Mark's way of channeling Isaiah. It's, Mark's way of saying, hey, stop, look, and listen, right? Stop what you're doing, open your eyes, and hear the word of the Lord. Now, 
the people in Galilee did, as, as we heard last week, they were amazed and astonished. Remember that? Yet Isaiah, they heard the kingdom of God. They saw the kingdom of God, right? Not this foretaste of the feast to come, as we so often say. They got to see a foretaste of the resurrection to come, right? Imagine that. Unclean spirits forced to leave those bodily home, homes they were squatting in. Someone's fever simply submitting to the touch of their Savior. And more. They saw it. They heard it. They believed it. The kingdom of God was right there in Galilee. And then it was gone. Right? Did you catch that in the reading? The next morning, he was gone. Simon comes looking for him and says, Jesus, everyone's looking for you. But he wasn't in town. We're told he was out at a desolate place, praying. And he was ready to go, to go to the next towns to preach there also. Because Jesus wants to preach, right? He wants to preach with his words and he wants to preach with his deeds. Was the kingdom of God leaving that place? I don't know, perhaps those who, who came the next day bringing more people to be healed might have thought so. Perhaps Simon didn't understand why Jesus would, would leave when things were going so well, when people were being healed. And... But the kingdom of God was not leaving. It was just spreading. Those who saw, those who heard, those who were healed would continue to speak of what happened the next day, the day after that, and the day after that. Even as Jesus began to go to other towns, to preach. No, the kingdom of God was here to stay. It was the kingdom of darkness that was leaving, being overcome by the Lord of life. But you know, the kingdom of darkness doesn't give up easily, does it? Demons forced out of one home find new homes to dwell in, and maybe they change their tactics too. And so by the time Paul gets to writing his letter to the Corinthian churches, the, the darkness he sees isn't the fevers or some kind of demon possessions. No, by this time, it's the darkness of divisions, factions, cliques within the church. I mean, he mentions them in the very first chapter of the book we heard today. How people were saying, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas. But it, just as John and Jesus preached the same message, so too says Paul, do we. The message of Christ crucified, risen from the dead. The preaching has power. The preaching has power. Not the men who preach it. Division is the devil's game. Divide and conquer. We heard it last week, too, when Paul said that the Strong don't divide themselves from the weak, but serve them. And this week, too, Paul says he has to preach. And he has to preach to all people. Right? Did you catch that? He preaches to the Jews. He preaches to those under the law. He preaches to those outside of the law. He preaches to those who are weak. He preaches to all, no matter who they are, where they are. He becomes them so that they might become what he is, a child of God united to Christ. So Paul goes on, says Jesus came for all and gives it his all. Right? And he uses that analogy of an athlete, right? There in Corinth at, at Greece, right? Today is Super Bowl Sunday, so why not talk about athletes? Right? They loved their athletes. Look at them, Paul says. Look at how they do it. Should we not be the same? Even more, since the prize we seek is so much more. So run that you may obtain it. Run that you may obtain it. So I ask you, where are we running? See, in our world today, we're running all over the place, right? We're, we're busier than ever. But the more we run, the further behind we seem to get the more tired we seem to feel. Could it be that we've, we're not running the right way? 
We're running, but we don't know where. What are we running toward? What are we running from? And this could be the new tactic of the kingdom of darkness for us today. To get us running down the wrong path. To get us running, but running where we don't know where we are going. Now to the people that day that we heard in the reading today, it might have seemed as if Jesus was running away from them. I mean, maybe that's what Simon thought too. But it wasn't. Jesus wasn't running from them. He was running for them. Right? He was running to the cross to preach there with his words and with his deeds because if he was going to save them, it wouldn't be there in Capernaum like that. It would be there on the cross. On the cross where Jesus became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. That's the finish line for Jesus. That was his goal. And so it is ours as well. That is where we stop. That is where we look. That is where we listen. We see and hear the kingdom of God, the glory of God, his love, his forgiveness. So when Paul says, run that you may obtain it, he's not telling them or us, just try harder, just run faster. He's telling us, run in the right direction. Run to the cross of Jesus. Where his cross is us for us today. Run, run to your baptism. Run to the word of God. Run to the altar and there receive the prize. There receive your savior. For as Paul said, only one receives the prize. And that was Jesus. And he won it. So that we could have it, all of us. He wanted to give it to you. Only one can receive the prize, only one could. Paul thought he could, that his all would be enough, but he found out later that his all could never be enough. But that Jesus' all was more than enough. And Jesus' all included him and was for him. And from that day on, he knew the path to run down. He knew which direction to run. And he knew he had to preach it. But that his preaching was really God preaching through him. For it was God's word that he spoke after all. And that word, that, that preaching has come to us now. That we too may see and hear the kingdom of God. Just as Isaiah proclaimed it, even youths, shall faint and be weary. Young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Maybe we should try it. Maybe we'll be surprised. Maybe we'll find the promises of God are true after all. Not that your life will be easy and everything you've ever wanted. If that's what you're running for, that's the wrong path. Because the kingdom of God looks like a cross and comes through the cross. But where the cross is, Jesus is. And where Jesus is, there is peace, there is joy, there is strength, and there is the hope that you need. And yes, so Jesus leaves Capernaum, goes to Judea, Nazareth, Nazareth, Samaria, here and there to preach. To preach and to do his kingdom in you, through you. That his kingdom would spread into all the world, into every home and into every heart. And though Mark doesn't tell us what Jesus prayed for when he left Capernaum out there that day in that desolate place. I'll bet he was praying for that, that we'll pray in a few moments, thy kingdom come, that the kingdom of God would grow in Capernaum, that all would hear, and by hearing believe, and by believing live, a life that no sickness or demon can end, 
a victorious life over sin, death, devil, and the grave. Yes, stop, look, listen, open your eyes, and hear the word of God, the life of Christ preached into you. Amen. And now may the peace of God, that peace that passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus, your Lord. Amen. Let us stand together as we continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We give thanks to you, dear Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, that through him the gospel has been preached, casting out the works of Satan and the corruption of sin, which we could not overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the church, give joy to your servants on whom you have laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that by your means many would be saved in every nation, and that together we may share in the blessings of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, give to all Christian homes the endurance that comes from your Holy Spirit, that husbands and wives, parents and children may be disciplined and self-controlled in their duties, run their course in this life, and continue to the end in the holy Christian faith ready to re receive the imperishable wreath of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations, you hold might over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth. Graciously preserve our land, its produce and industry, and our leaders together with our people. Do not disregard us for our sins, but renew us that our lives may be peaceful and our country governed according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Your son is the great physician of body and soul at whose hand demon disease and every ill effect of sin must turn away. We bring before you those this day in need. We pray especially for Audrey, Ashley, George, Harlan, Jim, Marvin, Phyllis, Verona, and Heidi. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Father, where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Bring us in such faith to your holy sacrament that the blood of Christ, which atoned for our sins, may make us whole. Strengthen us against every spiritual attack of the devil. Turn us in love toward our neighbor and preserve us in body and soul to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the preface as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created. 
and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, your only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this, the true body and the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you. May it preserve you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart now in his peace. Amen and amen. Let us stand together as we sing the post-communion canticle. Thank the Lord. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Maybe seated for our closing hymn, 825. Rise, shine, you people, 825.